Hello, welcome back. I hope you had nice holidays and all that. And this is the, I guess, first update about the channel, what the plans are for 2024, going forward with tutorials, projects, and all that kind of stuff. So as you can see, right now we are seeing, well, basically this is a potato chip. There is a little bit of an interesting part about this potato thing, because actually what it is, it is a part of an upcoming training. It's about understanding mathematical basics as applied to using them in 3D for, you know, modeling or just manipulating geometry and whatever. As you can see, it's actually a hyperbolic paraboloid, the color diffuse. Uh, you can see that indeed what we have is basically a subdivided grid that has been distorted using a math equation. And uh, I think it will be a rather interesting series of different videos that will actually discuss the fact that you cannot just use it only in Houdini, but I will provide at least one or two ways of manipulating geometry using math inside of Blender Geometry Nodes as well, and Unreal Engine. I think I will be using Houdini though, because it's uh, the easiest way to visualize and make it time independent, as opposed to making some of this inside of, for example, Niagara Scratch Pad, because it's relatively hard to control time dependent elements there. But the point is, I think that, uh, you know, using math to uh, model potato chips, is kind of funny, but very applicable if you want to learn math inside of 3D. I'm trying to make, uh, you know, fun projects like that, like the worst way to model stairs. And yep, like I said, it will be mostly covered inside of Houdini, but we will touch upon Blender Geometry Nodes and uh, Unreal Engine, at least using Scratch Pad of Niagara. And maybe if PCG introduces a little bit more nodes, we'll try to do it there, but that remains to be seen. But anyway, this is not a quick kind of like tutorial, as in it will not be produced within like a couple of weeks or something and just be done with it. It I will be trying to create it over the year because there are a lot of topics that we should cover, like sign or floor or any other mathematical elements that can be useful for both manipulating geometry and of course rendering and shading. So that's uh, part number one. The tutorial series number two will involve procedural shading and rendering and creating materials inside of Karma, Karma XPU, as we're talking about Houdini. Then we'll talk about uh, creating materials and shaders, all of them more or less procedural, inside of Cycles. And finally, we'll start talking about creating materials, shaders, all this kind of cool stuff inside of Unreal Engine 5. I'll try to cover everything that you need to know and you know, something going forward than that, because ultimate basics are just, you know, slap some material, tweak some metalness and be done with it. I don't think that's enough to actually, you know, create uh, interesting and or beautiful works of renders, because as you can see, this looks pretty cool. However, if we go to object and how it was created, as you can see, it doesn't look like much. It looks like some sort of rocks or sugar crystals that fell onto each other. And it doesn't look like much, right? So basically when you have geometry, even if it has like some interesting things about this geometry, it doesn't matter if you cannot render it properly. So it kind of like, if it looks uh, pretty boring and whatever, what's the point of having cool geometry if you cannot render it to showcase the whole beauty of your geometry? Let's call it like that, right? So anyway, as you can see, there is a preview. It's not super involved or whatever, but it will be interesting to create, so, you know, layered shaders and other shaders that I already have developed for this course. But again, this is a little preview of that. Uh, like I said, I want to repeat it just one more time because we will use Karma CPU, Karma XPU. We will also use Blender Cycles. And after that, we will use Unreal Engine 5 materials and rendering capabilities. I'm doing this like that because I want you to showcase that if you learn the basics of creating shaders and materials in some engine or another, it is not very hard to translate that knowledge into any other DCC or application like real time, for example, Unreal Engine or Unity or Godot or whatever. This will be kind of like three courses about the same topic. But again, I want to reiterate, I personally do not like when people start arguing about which application or DCC or render engine is the best. My goal here is to show you that you can use anything and with knowledge that you can, you know, get 
for example, from my videos, you can apply them in your other application. For example, if you like using Maya and use Arnold, again, the, you will be converting the knowledge you'll get from Cycles and Karma into Arnold, and it will be not be a problem. Uh, same goes for Cinema 4D, for example. It will be relatively easy to convert a knowledge from for example, cycles into Redshift because they are somewhat similar. This is again upcoming relatively soon. I think I will start recording this at the end of the January or at least in the first week of the February. So that's project number two. Then again, the amount of material that I should create for Unreal Engine, it will take many weeks. So that'll be probably one of the most involved courses out there, but it should be fun. And I hope you learn a lot of things. Finally, if you ever visit my personal website, you will see, first of all, there is a, there is not a lot of things that's going on here, but there is an article, or should I say it's kind of like, I don't know, promotional page, something like that, about the plans for 2024. And as you can see, I already have started working on some sort of real-time VFX using Niagara. This is like building sites hologram in the city. This one is a real-time and interactive particle system that generates kind of like the velocity visualization of the airflow around the car. And there is a lot of blah, 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 all of which is to say that the big project for 2024 is to actually start building assets on that world building project. I was, you know, testing r and throughout the 2023. And this year I will be trying to make it more tangible than just some random tests here and there. So anyway, that's the big 2024 plan. And finally, I just want to make a little preview about the upcoming VFX tutorials for Unreal Engine 5, because um, I've been starting working on transitioning pretty much all I have inside of Houdini and elsewhere into the realm of interactive and real-time VFX. And at this one, you can see actually there is a relatively straightforward and easy effect. However, the interesting part about it is that we actually will be utilizing the custom scratch module to control the positioning of our points, how they are generated. Um, it's kind of like attribute VOPs running on GPU and it has uh, some limitations, but more or less it's very much superior to geometry time operations like an attribute VOPs. So that's pretty cool. This will be starting appearing in spring or something like that. So hold on, hold on to your hats. <laughs> uh, with that out of the way, I hope you had great holidays. I hope you have some interesting ideas for the upcoming year. And I hope to make much more videos for this channel because I love sharing this. I love seeing your feedback and having discussions around, you know, different ways, techniques of doing some things and stuff like that. And finally, the final assembly and final pixel and all that kind of stuff will be inside of Unreal Engine because I think that um, real time and interactive VFX and entertainment is the way forward, at least for me, it's more interesting for me personally, rather than, you know, sitting there and watching the paint dry and, uh, you know, simulating water effects or whatever. It's not super interesting to me personally. With the developments of Unreal Engine 5, I think this, well, literally is the best way forward to making any interactive experiences and even offline experiences as well. So hopefully this was useful. If you're interested in what's upcoming, if you haven't yet uh, subscribed to my channel, do that. If you did subscribe to my channel, well, thanks for watching and hopefully I see you in the next videos. Have a good day and see you later. Bye-bye.